There we go. Oh, look at that. It's a lot faster now. Okay. So, like always, I'm going to have to see how much I want to read. So I'll have to just turn on the light because it's getting dark out. I plan on reading a lot, but we'll see how far I can go. Oh, yeah, that's too much. I'm not going to read that much. Hmm. Okay. All right. I think I know where I want to leave off, but that can always change. And it probably will. Okay. First off, I gotta... There we go. Yeah, I think that should be a good place. So I'll leave off at. So we will see. Hell yeah. Yeah, hype. All right, so last we left off, um, last when we left off, uh, Kyoshi and Rangi went to, uh, the Daofei, and we learned that Kyoshi's parents were the leaders of the Daofei, but they are no longer, and it's, only a few Daofei members. Yeah, and it's only a few Daofei, uh, only a few Daofei members. And she, she was just gonna try to get. She was basically gonna try and steal all their resources, sort of thing. But it turns out they have none. They actually suck. In what way? I don't know what way you're referring to. They're just bad at what they do. Yeah, I think they're just bad at what they do. Or I... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, we will get on with it. I'm pretty sure I'm going to finish this before the next book comes out. Like, maybe right before the next book comes out. Which I'm just like, yes, great timing. Yeah, they have one, yeah, basically. Yeah, but let's... Shit, I forgot to put on my glasses. That's what I was gonna do, and then I... Totally got sidetracked. So, this chapter, this chapter is called Escape. Oh yeah, because they were, now some guards are coming down to the hideout or the place where they're at, so. Alright. So, 
This chapter is called The Escape. I wonder what's going to happen in this episode, in this chapter. Ooh. But yes. Ooh. Ugh. Escape. The sound of marching boots hitting the road filled, filled the air. You stupid old man, Lex shouted. I'm never putting you on watch again. Finally, Lagu said. He winked at Kyoshi. Uh, officers wearing constabulary? Constabulary? I'm pretty sure that I'm saying it right, but I just want to make sure. Constabulary. Yes. Yep. There we go. I will say it right. Watch me say it wrong. <laughs> Officers wearing constabulary green uh, hustled into the tea house. They found out long sides to accommodate their numbers, reaching to the corners, 20 or so. Wearing quilted armor with single Dao broadswords on their belt on their backs. <sighs> At the head of their formation, still in plain clothes, but now wearing the same headband adorned with the perfectual badge of the law as the others were the same three men who'd been in the tea house earlier. Remind me again who's good at spotting undercovers like? Karima snarled. In a moment of panic, Kyoshi thought the officers had come for her on behalf of Jianzu, but that couldn't have been the case. If he'd, if he'd sent out messengers immediately, they wouldn't have Yeah, if he'd sent out messengers immediately, they wouldn't have beaten a bison. No, she thought with a grimace. They were here for the girl who'd walked into an outlaw hideout and started making demands with outlaw codes. She'd incriminated herself with in public like a fool. In the name of Governor Deng, you are under arrest, the captain said. Instead of a sword, he pointed a ceremonial trunken, trunk, truncheon? Tr it's not, tr I think it's truncheon. 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 This one. I don't know how it's pronounced because it's like a weird truncheon, I think. Yeah, truncheon. Sounds all muffled together. Okay. Yeah. Instead of sword, he pointed a ceremonial truncheon topped with the Earth King's seal at, at them, but it looked heavy enough to break bones regardless. Put down your weapons. Dang. The name brought more terror to Kyoshi's heart than a charging saber-toothed moose lion. Stout, red-nosed governing... Stout, red-nosed Governor Deng was a frequent visitor... Uh, yeah, stout, red-nosed Governor Deng was a frequent visitor to Jianzu's house and one of his closest allies. Kiyoshi glanced at Rangi. The firebenders were the firebenders worried headshake uh, confirmed her fear. If they got caught here tonight, the whole operation was over. They'd be back in Jianzu's grass before his breakfast got cold. The captain did not like the eye contact between her and Rangi. I said, put down your weapons, he shouted, bristling for a fight. The Dao Fei looked at their empty hands in confusion. 
Here she realized that unless the man felt particularly threatened by a lie, that here she realized that unless the man felt particularly threatened by Lao Gu's bottles, the only armed one, the only armed one was she. The glinting war fan was still in her hand. Its mate stuck to her belt. She stood up so she could have room to yank the other fan out. The captain took a step back in, in astonishment. He, he interpreted her. Uh, he interpreted her unfurling of her full height. Yeah, he interpreted... Yeah. Yeah, because she stood up. She... He had interpreted her unfurling of her full height as a, hot as a hostile act. He wasn't the first. Take them! He shouted to his men. There were so many of them, crammed in the dark, in the dark confines of the tea house. The... Police force seemed larger in number. The police force seemed larger in, in number than Tagaka's martyrs. Five of the officers made a beeline for Kiyoshi, the obvious target. They were knocked down by a blast of fire. Kiyoshi glanced back at Rangi again. She had extended her. She had her fists extended, her skin smoking. Her face was upset but unrepentant. No, a unrepentant. Unrepentant. Yeah, her face was upset, but unrepentant. If they were in, they were in full measure. Rangi didn't do things by halves. Inspired by her decisiveness, Wong picked up Lao Gu and threw the drunkard, the, th the drunkard bodily at the captain like a rag doll. Lao Gu's warlike screech as he flew through the air was the only sign that he'd agreed to the act. The two of them must have done it before. The element of surprise worked strongly in their favor as Lao Gu's weary arms wrapped around the captain's neck and his legs scissored around the waist of his subordinate, becoming a human net. Just me! Basically. Another blast from Rangi sizzled past Kyoshi's ear. She, she no longer knew what was going on. Men closed in on her with swords drawn. She picked up the nearest, heaviest object and... She picked up the nearest, heaviest object, the Paisho board, by one of its legs and threw it, threw it in an arc. The policemen were about, were bowled over. Yeah, the policemen were bowled over like wheat stalks by the dense wooden bludgeon. The ones who tried to block her wild strikes with their dow had their swords bent, had their swords bent and crushed against their torsos for their for their trouble. Fresh officers ran in through the door, only to slip on a sheet of ice that Kramo laid down using nothing but the remaining wine from Lao Gu's stash. Kyoshi jolted in surprise at the Kyoshi jolted in surprise at the reversed reserved not reverse. Yeah, Kyoshi jolt jolted in surprise at the reversed why do I want to say reversed? Reserved. Yeah, uh, Kyoshi jolted in surprise at the reserved minimalist twirl of her wrists and fingers. For a moment, it looked like Tagaka of the Fifth Nation was fighting for her. Yeah, for a moment, it looked like Tagaka of the Fifth Nation was fighting on her side. Go, girl! Lagu said, clamping swords inside their scabbards. Hold on, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, for a moment it looked like Tagaka of the Fifth Nation was fighting on her side. Girl! Uh, Lao Gu said. 
clamping swords inside their scabbards wherever his bony fingers and toes could reach. Bump the table! She didn't have the same previous working relationship with him as Wong, but Kyoshi caught his drift. She raised her foot high and stomped to the floor. The tea house jumped into the air again, this time tilted higher from the back. Lao Gu and several of the policemen fell through the door. The others were knocked prone, scrambling on the straw and frozen wine. Kyoshi's new compatriots managed to stay upright, having seen the trick before. Out the other side! Lex yelled. What about Lao Gu? She hadn't meant to dump in she hadn't meant to dump him into the thick of the enemy. She can handle himself. Move! She flung the pie show board at the nearest officers and followed the others through the kitchen. It was empty, just a little room with a clay stove that smoldered from one attempt Fleck had made at tea. Another door gave way, and they were in the town square behind the building. The passage had been disguised, painted over without a frame. Yeah, the passage had been disguised, painted over without a, without a frame, and there were no windows, so it was the side of the house that was least well guarded by the police. Only two men held positions there. Kyoshi heard a zip zip noise, and they were, and they crumbled to the ground before they could, have, before they could wave their sound. Their, uh, Sorry, I'm getting so distracted right now. Yeah, let me start over that thing. Yeah, the passage had been disguised, painted over without a frame, and there were no windows. So it was like the side of the house that was... So, so it was the... God damn it. So it was the side of the house that was least well guarded by the police. Only two men held positions there. Kyoshi heard a zip zip noise and they were crumbled to the ground before they could wave their swords. Lek, t Lek tucked something back into his pocket. Where's your ride? Rangi answered, which was good because Kyoshi had lost her bearings and had no idea. Southwest corner of the town. she said. If everyone follows me, I can get us there. There was a harsh scrape of clay from above. A whole section of roof tiles slowed over, slowed, slowed off, yeah, slowed off and came crashing down at their heels as they ran. Reaching Peng Peng meant running along the edge of the square, seeking one outlet from the many crumbled alleyways branching and yeah, reaching Peng Peng um, meant running along the edge of the square, seeking one outlet from the many cram cramped alleyways, branch branching and forking in different directions, like the veins of a leaf. Kyoshi caught sight of the reason why they hadn't been swarmed by more lawmen. Lao Gu was tangling, a Lao Gu was tangling with a whole platoon of them by the main entrance. They slashed wildly at the air he occupied, only to come up empty every time. He folded and rolled his body like the wine still fogged his mind, dodging and flipping, his movements seemingly designed to taunt and frustrate them. Kyushi saw him leaning over at impossible angles nearly parallel to the ground and realized he was subtly earthbending supports underneath his torso changing his center of gravity to, com to confound his opponents. We can't leave him, she shouted to the others. Apparently they could, because no one else gave Lao Gu a second thought. This one! This one, Rengi said, darting down a passage into the darkness. But before anyone had a chance to follow, a thick stone wall shut up from the ground, reaching the height of the neighborhood of the neighboring roofs, closing the exit off. The police force had brought earthbenders of their own. Lek, Lek 
kept running after her as if he were oblivious to the obstacle in his path. Kiyoshi thought he was going to dash his brain Kiyoshi thought he was going to dash his brains out against the wall. And then he did one of the most amazing things she had ever she has she had ever seen. He stepped up and he stepped up into the thin air. Lick ran higher and higher on invisible stairs. Ah, oh, I think he's an er he's an airbender. It was the only thing it was only after he'd gone above eye level that she saw how. Airbending bandit? May damn, I wonder. Let, let me keep reading. Yeah, it was only after he'd gone above eye level that she saw how. The th oh my god. The thinnest columns of earth she'd seen anyone earthbend shot up from the ground with each of his steps, anticipating where his foot would land next. They provided a moment's support and then crumbled into dust immediately once his weight shifted off of them. His rising path left no trace behind him. Oh my god, yeah, he is. He is an incredible earthbender. God damn. Okay, let me put this under my laptop because it's getting hot. Okay. Okay, hold on just one second. But yeah, he's incredible. I thought he was an airbender for sure. His rising, his rising path may left no trace behind him. Kiyoshi had watched children around the village play by bending the ground they stood on into the air. It was sometimes a test of courage. Who could make their pillow the who could make their pillar the highest, or a game of coordination. Taking her to the partner to see, to see saw back and forth, but it was always highly destructive to the ground leaving jagged marks of what had happened, and the players had to remain still or they'd fall off the platforms. Lek had none of those concerns. He floated, weightless, free of the earth's pole. He stepped over the top of the wall and onto a roof, and onto a roof before disappearing. The feat wasn't, the feat wasn't limited to earthbenders. Karima uncorked a small pouch at her waist and Wisps of water filled forth, spilled forth, gathering under her feet. She stepped higher into nothingness, much le much as, much as life had. Only her stairs, only her stairs were powerful, thin jets that provided the same resistance as earth, as earth. If the timing was more difficult for her, or if the timing, yeah, if the timing was more difficult for her, or the water less stable. She compensated with supreme grace. One glanced at Kiyoshi as if to check what she was thinking. You can't possibly, was what? He shrugged at her skepticism and followed his teammate skyward, using earth and dust uh, as like hat, like it was no big deal. The sight of the gentle. Uh, the sight of the gigantic man defying all notions of gravity made her jaw drop. Her jaw drop. Her jaw drop. It looked like it looked less like bending and more like spiritual chicanery. Did I say that right? I think I said it right.
chicanery. Okay. Yeah, it looked less like bending and more like spiritual chicanery. An invisible hawk lifting Wong's bulk over the roof line. Kiyoshi watched him and Karima over, run over eaves and window sills, and the blank spaces of alley gaps with equal with equal ease. The show whole, the whole show had happened in less than seconds. It was a mind blowing stunt, and highly unfortunate. Because no one had taken into consideration that Kiyoshi could do that, she expressly with ut with utmost certainty could not do that. Cut her off! A policeman shouted behind her. A second slab of rock shot up, shot up to her right, then left, left, left. Then she sprinted for the nearest remaining avenue and made it out of the square before it was blocked shut. Immediately, she knew it was a mistake. The alley veered sharply away from the direction the others had gone. The forks in the narrowing street had no markers, and each subsequent guess she made only got her more lost. The houses squeezed in on her as she ran, promising to throttle her by the gills like a fish in a net. The bla a blast of flame shot up into the darkening sky, and then another, a source slight. Yeah, a blast of flame shot into the darkening sky, and then another. The source slightly to the right. Rangi was signaling to her where to go. Kyoshi felt her heart skip a beat for her friend. It was either that or a conniption. It was either that or a conniption from running at full speed for so long. She followed the upcoming bend to the direction of the fire. Yeah, she followed the upcoming bend in the direction of the fire. But so did the lawmen. In fact, they used their knowledge of the town layout to seal a march on her, suddenly popping into view closer behind her. She couldn't move back. She couldn't double back. And up ahead, a dead end loomed. The alley... The alley had been walled up with bricks. No way out, girl. An officer with adm admirable lung capacity. No way out, girl. An officer with admirable lung capacity bellowed. Step, she thought to herself. Do the thing like they did. Kiyoshi, do the thing. Do the thing that, like they did. Her self-berating voice sounded a lot like ranking in her head. I was just about to type that. <laughs> yeah, as soon as that particular line, do the thing, that's just like, iconic. Yes, for those who don't know, me and my boyfriend just finished well, he finished rewatching, but I it was my first time watching Korra, and it's amazing. And if you're Korra haters, your opinion is your own, but I think it's trash. But that's just my opinion, which may be trash to you, but for me, it's gold, and... That Korra is never going to beat Avatar, The Last Airbender, but you know what? It's something different. It's got a good story that you just hate a lot. Okay, rant over, maybe. <laughs> but yes, we were, um, do the thing. If people have watched Korra, when Julie does the thing, do the thing, Q, she's doing the thing. All right. Step, she thought to herself. Do the thing like they did. 
Her self-berating voice sounded a lot like Rangi in her head. It should be easier with more speed, right? She hurled herself toward the wall, praying that she could avatar herself into picking up a technique she'd only seen once. Her on-the-run attempt to bend the necessary struts without destroying the whole town resulted in only pitiful bumps of earth appearing before her. They collapsed under her weight, tripping her up. She fell forward uncontrol uncontrollably, face first. She was unable to cross her arms in front of her before she she was unable to cross her arms in front of her before she made impact. Kiyoshi shut her eyes as she slammed into the wall. There was a terrible crash, an explosion of snapping bricks and tearing mortar. And when she opened them again, she was on she was on the other side, still running. She plowed straight through without feeling a thing. She must have bent reflexively, flinched and wrapped herself in her own power like a cloak. A quick glance back showed a Kyushi-sized hole in the wall, and surprised guards trying to decide whether to leap through or go or go over the top. Damn. That's a big hole. That's huge. She just she thought she was gonna do that cool thing that Lick and fucking, uh, what's his other name, uh, Wong did, but no, she just earthbended her way through that shit. Hell yeah. In her distraction, she collided with the corner of a house. Fear of broken bones caused her to force her way through the clay structure the instant she felt the pain of the impact on her shoulder. The building stayed standing, a neat chunk of it ripped off like a sampled loaf of bread. Ahead of her, the spaces between, yeah, ahead of her, the spaces between closed up mer mer merchant shops were so narrow that a person smaller than her would have had to stop and wedge through, the s and wedge through sideways. Rangi sent up another, another beacon. The only way to get there was, was as the bird flew. Kiyoshi sent an apology into the cosmos for the damage she was about to cause, and barreled straight, and, and barreled straight into the cluster of buildings. She couldn't be, a, if she couldn't be a creature of grace, then she'd be a battering ram. She smashed through the first wall like it was rice paper. Inside, she crossed the floor. Kyo, she smashed. Yeah. <laughs> We're not gonna say Hulk smash anymore. We're gonna say Kyo, she smash. From now on. <sighs> All right. <clears throat> uh, uh, uh. God damn it, that's not what I wanted to do. There we go. There we go. There we go. Yeah, she smashed through the first wall like it was rice paper. Inside, she crossed the floor in a few in a few steps and burst into the, into the neighboring section, boring a passageway through the cluster of, st of storerooms. Each section she stampeded through offered a momentary glimpse of, dif of different merchandise, dry goods, wet goods, weapons, ivory, ivory that was certainly illegal, fancy hats. She was glad she was only ruining, she was glad that she was only ruining inventory and not harming living occupants with flying debris. She felt, her face felt tight and she wondered if she'd injured herself, if she'd, injur if she'd injured herself, ripped her skin open. But no, she determined, but no, she determined. She was grinning with a locked, maddened expression, mildly, mindlessly exulting in her own power and destruction. Once she realized it, she quickly worked her jaw back into a grim frown, 
and splashed through the next wall. An unfamiliar sensation caused her to flail after hitting the last barrier. It was freedom. She was in a broad street, going the right way for once. Up above her on the rooftops, the whole crew sprang deftly from surface to surface, bolstering themselves with their element when necessary. I see you made your own shortcut, Karima shouted. The water lifting her up sparkled prettily in the moonlight, making her look like a lunar fairy. Kyushi checked behind her to see if anyone had followed the trail of utter devastation she'd left through the town. Where's Rangi? Still in the lead. That's quite a companion you've got. There was another blaze of light that resembled a rocket climbing into the night. Rangi had joined the Dao Fei on their level. She ran as nimbly as they did on the roof tiles, and when there was a leap too great to make naturally, she stepped on jets of fire that blasted out of her feet, bounding in propulsive arcs, bounding in propulsive arcs across the sky. The sight made Kyushi's breath come to a standstill. The sight made Kyushi's breath come to a standstill, come to a standstill at the very time she needed it flowing. Rangi was so beautiful illuminated by moon and fire that it hurt she was strength and skill and determination wrapped around an unshakable heart kyoshi had always admired rangi but right now it felt as if she were gazing at a friend through a pane of glass freshly cleaned some mighty and loving spirit had reached down from the heavens and outlined the firebender in new strokes of color and vibrance Damn. There's no <laughs> there is no hetero heterosexual explanation for this. Nope, none at all. Totally and utterly gay. Totally and utterly gay. Yeah, as soon as like I read like. At the sight of Ki at the the sight of Ku, she's the sight made Ku. She's breath. I was just like, here we go. The descent or the ascent into Gaidum. And damn, it is beautiful. Okay, well, let's hear more of this beautiful inner monologue that Ku she is having. Some mighty and loving spirit had reached down from the heavens and outlined the firebender and outlined the new the firebender in new strokes of color and vibrance. There was a struggle in Koshi's chest that had nothing to do with how hard she was running. Notes of longing and fear played in one court. She tamped the feeling down, not wanting to confront what, not wanting to confront what it meant right now. In any case, it was a poor time to be distracted. Soon they exhausted their supply of houses to leap over. Damn, I guess that was the last of it. For now, I guess. Uh, yeah, soon they exhausted their supply of houses to leap over. They reached the shanties in the outskirts, causing more confusion for the residents who'd seen Kyushi and Rangi head inward for the night but now flee for their lives in the opposite direction with three other people in tow. Luck raced for the corpse, for the corpse, for the cops. Cops or copes? I think it's copes, but it could be cops. Yeah, it's cops. Okay. But it's like caps. Okay. 
Luck raced for the copse of trees without being told, perhaps understanding that there were only a few places you could hide a ten-ton bison. Kyoshi reached the copse in time to catch the boy as Peng Peng roared and blasted him backward with wind. Easy, girl, she coughed, her lungs burning from the run, and inhaled the building dust. They're with us. Walking across the sky, walking across the sky must have been a highly efficient technique because no one else seemed as tired as she. Rangi leaped onto the Rangi leaped onto Peng Peng's neck and unwound the reins from the saddle horn. The Daofei climbed onto the bison's back, gripping her fur with strange famili familiarity. Once they were settled, Rangi took Peng Peng up above the tree line. Lek was ecstatic. A bison! He, straight, he screamed, drumming on the saddle floor. A real bison! Calm down! Rangi said, it's not like you can't see them near the air temple. It's not like you, can you can't see them near any air temple. He's just excited because we used to have one of our own, Wong said. Cute little fella named Long Wing. Cute little fella named Long Yen. Long Yen. Despite... Despite their need to move quickly, Rangi paused, leaving Peng Peng swooping around in a gentle idling circle. Wait, how? She said. Only air nomads can tame bison. The animals won't listen to strangers if they're stolen. We didn't steal Yang Long Yen, Karima said. He was just as bison. Rangi squinted in confusion and turned to Kiyoshi. But wasn't Jessa your mother? Kiyoshi winced. She spotted a reprieve. She spotted a re reprieve from the awkward conversation, albeit only a temporary one. On the ground below them, waving his hands, was Lao Gu. <laughs> Lao Gu. He managed to escape the dozens of men who had surrounded the, who had, who had him surrounded, and made it to the hiding spot in better time than anyone else. The Dao Fei didn't look one bit surprised to see him. Rangi took Peng Peng Lo and Wang leaned over, clasping hands with Lao Gu and swinging him in, onto the saddle, again with the smooth ease of practice. I thought we might finally be rid of your stinking hide, Luck yelled. Not quite so easy. Not quite so easy, Lao Gu said. Is anyone else thirsty? I could use... Shut up, Rangi snapped. She fixed Kiyoshi with her gaze again. Does that mean what I think it means? About your mother? She looked hurt at another secret being kept from her, but Kyoshi had honestly, sincerely forgotten to bring it up. It hadn't been relevant until now. Yes, Kyoshi said sheepishly. My mother was an airbender. I'm half air nomad. She felt terribly guilty. She'd forced Rangi to absorb a lot in the past day. Finding out that Kyoshi wasn't fully Earth King, finding out that Kyoshi wasn't the fully Earth Kingdom girl that Rangi had assumed this whole time, was yet another small weight added to the pile. But hearing that a despicable criminal and gang boss was an air nomad. Ah, oh, okay, yeah. So she was a crime boss, but she was an air nomad. Because as soon as we found out that, because I thought Lek was an air nomad, like an airbender. Yeah, air bandit. Yeah. Because I, I thought to myself after we read that Lek was using earthbending, that I was just like, 
Yeah, fucking air, air nomads or airbenders couldn't possibly be bandits and stuff like that. But no, I was wrong. And I'm glad I was wrong. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. But hearing that a despicable criminal and gang boss was an air nomad would have had would have been enough to shock and confuse anyone. People around the world looked up to the airbenders as enlightened paragons who were free of worldly concerns. They belonged to a benign, peaceful monastic monastic culture that was so spiritually pure that every single member member had bending ability. Ranky resembled Ranky resembled a child who'd just been told that the sweets tucked underneath her pillow had been left by her parents instead of the great harvest spirit. Karima and Wong detected the awkwardness between them and remained silent. Lek wasn't so observant. What's everyone looking sour for? He said, slapping Rangi and Kyoshi on their backs. We finally, we finally have a bison again. Our best days are ahead of us. He thrust his fists into the air and let out a whoop. The Flying Opera Company is back in business. They camped along the bank of a dried up creek hiding themselves in vir by virtue of being way out in the middle of nowhere. Hold on. I gotta get a sip of water. Yeah, they camped along the bank. Yeah, they camped, they camped along the bank of, dry, of a dried up creek hiding themselves by virtue of being out in the middle of in, by virtue of being way out in the middle of nowhere if the if the officers in chameleon bay knew what direction they'd gone and it still would have taken at least a day by ostrich horse to catch up they didn't bother hiding the fire rangi blasted into the ground for them Yeah, they didn't bother hiding the, the fire Rangi blasted in, into the ground for them. It burned largely. It burned larger than they needed, sputtering and, crack and crackling from unseasoned fuel. They ate the last of the dried food. Krema and Wong fell asleep first, without asking about chips. Lek waited in the waterless creek, picking up a few polished stones that caught his fancy before he settled in for the night. Ranky was holding a grudge over how badly the day's events had gone, almost getting arrested by the local police, the Delphi insinuating themselves into their camp, the revelations about Kyoshi's heritage. So the two of them engaged in a silent, petty contest of contest of wills to see who would follow who would fall asleep next. Kyoshi had the advantage, knowing that there was probably a nightmare waiting for her. She made sure Ranky was truly out cold before laying the good blanket they kept hidden from the others over the fire. Ugh. She made sure Ranky was truly out cold before laying the good blanket they would kept hidden from the others over the firebender's shoulders. Kyoshi walked along the river, wobbling past, wobbling. Kyoshi walked along the river wobbling over pa pavestone sized rocks that had once been over underwater until she found Lao Gu sitting under a snarl under a gnarled tree. Half of its roots had been washed clean in some long ago flash flood, while the rest clung tightly to the bank. The tree's efforts were in vain. It was dying. Lao Gu's eyes were closed in meditation. You're very loud he said. She frowned. She had practiced stepping lightly for years as a servant, to move like a whisper so as not to distract guests. I mean, your spirit is loud, the old man said. It rings in the air. Sometimes it screams, like right now. Your body may be all over there, 
but your spirit is grabbing me by the shoulders and howling in my face. If you went into the spirit world in your current condition, you'd cause a typhoon the size of Boston Say. I know who you are, Q, she said. It took me a while to figure it out, but after seeing you fight so many men at once, it was clear. She's a loud and proud girl. Yes, she is. Yeah, it took me a while to figure out, figure it out. But after seeing you fight so many men at once, it was clear. He opened one eye a crack. Too, she had a theory that people who liked meditating practiced that gesture to look good, good humored and wise. You're Teague Wise, a mortal. Yeah, you're Teague Wise. I don't know how to say this word, but yes, or name. You're Teague Wise, a mortal. Kiyoshi said. Oh, Lao Gu said, fully interested now. I suppose there was a description of me in Justice Journal. Long white hair, great dancer, devastatingly handsome. It didn't have much, much detail. It said you were an underworld legend rumored to be a 200 years old, but that's obviously a tall tale. Of course, I'm a man, not a spirit after all. I know it's you because of a different description, Q, she said. Tiguai fights with a crutch. I was looking for someone with a wooden crutch or a bad leg. Then I saw you leaning on your earth bending while, while you fought the lawmen in the square. Lao Gu sighed as if, he pitied, as if he pitied her for putting two and two together. He put his hands on his knees and raised himself to his feet. Then he tiptoed down the web of roots until he was in Kyushi's face. Why would one such as yourself seek out immortal Tiguai? He said, no longer an old man, but a human-headed monster asking a riddle in exchange for safe passage. After all, your mother never did. She only called me Lao Gu. The root he perched on shouldn't have been able to support a bird, let alone a human being. Q, she swallowed hard. She had a sense of tumbling downhill, her inner ears roiling like choppy seas, an inability to go back to the harbor. Because she was afraid of you, Q, she said. She didn't know when... She didn't know when you first joined the group, but her suspicions grew over time that you were Tiguai, the assassin. Tiguai, who killed the 40th Earth King. She figured out that you were using her smuggling gang, gang as cover to travel from place to place as you eliminated targets for your own purposes. She was too scared to confront you. The entries in her mother's hand had been completely fearless while describing dangerous. Yeah, a lot of Earth royalty seems to get assassinated. You're right. Man, but like, I feel like the Earth Kingdom's monarchy is just like, just been bad. Who knows why they killed the 40th the 40th Earth King, but like the problem with the Dai Li and the Avatar, the Avatar series, and then with the Queen, the Earth Queen, and the Korra series, man, the Earth Kingdom has a lot of, you know, 
work to do on their government. <laughs> But that's what Prince or King Wu was trying to do in the comic books, which I would recommend to everyone. They were really good. Okay. Whew. The entries in her mother's hand had been completely fearless while describing dangerous smug smuggling jobs, burglaries, and skirmishes with local militias. They were the musings of someone who thrilled the life of a Dao Fei. But the journal had also but the journal had but the journal also had patches where hold on. But the journal also had patches that were rife with criminal superstition. None more than the scattered stories about a shadow who moved across the Earth Kingdom, snuffing out lives both exalted and lowly according to some unknowable design. To some un unknowable design. Just as, just as the smuggler had pieced together the pattern. Whenever the silly old man and her gang slipped away by himself, a death would happen nearby. Sometimes it would be a prominent noble who should have been safe behind thick walls and numerous guards. Lao Gu, the name had stuck hard, lowered his head, and mouthed a quickly prayer for the dead. That woman was always very observant. I'm surprised I didn't catch her catching me. So what is it that her daughter wants? To bring me to justice? No, Kiyoshi said. I want you to teach me how to kill someone. If Lao Gu was surprised by her answer, he didn't show it. Hit them in the head really hard with a rock. No, Kiyoshi repeated. Bending and killing are not the same thing. The image raced through her mind the way Jianzu had so casually done the unspeakable, first to Yoon and then to Kelsang. As easy as breathing. It needed to be it needed to be that easy for her. She could afford no mental block, no hesitation when it came to taking his life. She had to be ready in all regards when she saw when she next saw Jianzu. A breeze and a breeze in the night air puckered her skin. Puckered her skin. You should go to sleep, girl. Lao Gu said, because you've already learned lesson one. So does that mean we'll continue later? She decided to test the waters. Sifu. If and when I believe the time is right. She bowed and left him to his meditations, backing away from, backing away out of distrust as much as respect. Her footing was unsteady and threatened to roll her ankles. Right before she was about to turn, Lao Gu spoke up again. I'd appreciate it if you didn't tell the others about my independent ventures. My independent ventures, he said. I don't wish to complicate matters with our little merry band. The relationship between Lao Gu and the other Dao Fei was not her problem, but if that was the only leverage she had in order to get him to teach her, she'd use it. I wouldn't dream of it, Sifu. Lao Gu smiled benignly. It reminded her of Jiantu's, only more genuine. It reached his eyes. Yeah, it reached his eyes. He had no need to hide what he was from her. In, and in return, I'll keep your secret, he said. Kiyoshi. And that is the end of that chapter. I kind of... I'm not surprised that he knows about her identity if she's what he says he is. 
the immortal I'm thinking maybe he is a spirit, but maybe he is also a human that is just very, very old. I don't know. Yeah, I think he's just an old guy that knows how to fucking very spiritually in tune, and maybe that's why he is that old. But yes. Okay. All right. The next chapter. All right, the next chapter is called... Oh, wait, hold on. I need to plug in my... my computer to my charger because it is going to die. There we go. All right. So yes, the next chapter is called The Agreement. The Agreement. Kyoshi slept poorly, fretting during the night over what the old man had said, her secret. First Sugaka and now Lagu. If every old person could look her could look at, if every old person could look into her eyes and deduce she had unusual power or was the avatar, then she'd be in trouble. The only vendor she'd been a, she'd be able to learn from would be infants like Lick. A toe in her ribs woke her. She clawed at the hard surface under her. Yeah, she clawed at the hard, the hard surface under her, dirt filling her, filling her fingers instead of her sheets. She found herself barren. She found herself barringly missing her bed. Get up, Rangi said. The sun hasn't risen yet, and the fires. The sun ha hadn't risen yet, and the fire still had a few red embers glowing in it. Laogu was nowhere to be seen, and the others were engrossed in a three-way snoring contest. Gray Predon light, gray light made the dusty riverbank appear like it had been treated by, with lye, leached of color and vitality. Kyoshi staggered to her feet, having moved in, having moved in the night. The good blanket fell off her onto the ground. What? 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 Rangi shoved her along the bank, in the opposite direction she'd taken last night. You wanted training. Well, you're getting training. Starting today. Now. They walked. They walked. Kyoshi feeling like a prisoner as Rangi prodded her sharply every so often for not moving fast enough. They put some distance between themselves and the camp, but much less than Kyoshi thought they would by the time Rangi ordered her to stop. A series of grassy mounds shielded them from view of the others, but the small hills weren't very high. Let's see your horse stance, Rangi said. You don't get a pass on the basics that earthbending has in common with... You didn't... Uh, you don't get a pass on the pace. You don't get a pass on the basics that earthbending has in common with firebending. We're firebending here. Anyone who came searching for them would certainly check this place. They'd left Ping Ping alone with criminals who coveted her. We're reviewing basics, not making flame. Rangi said. I doubt you need I doubt you need a lot of nuanced high level instruction at this point. Can you even hold a deep bend Can you even hold a deep bending stance for ten minutes? Ten minutes? 
Kyushu heard five was an admirable goal, one that she'd never reach. There was a hint of a smirk on there was a hint of a smirk on Raiden's lips. Four stance. Now. I don't say things to my students twice. Three minutes in and Kyushu knew what this was. Punishment. The burning in her thighs and back, the ache in her knees, was retribution for not telling Rangi everything. Look, I'm sorry, she said. Rangi rested her elbow in her other hand and examined her nails. Yep. Not the muscles. Yep. Look, I'm sorry, she said. Rinky rested her elbow in her other hand and examined her nails. You're allowed to talk once your hips are get. You're allowed to talk once your hips get to parallel. Kyoshi swore and Kyoshi swore and re readjusted her bones. This had to be an exercise meant for short people. I should have told you my mother was an airbender. I didn't think it was relevant. Rangi seemed satisfied with the apology or the amount of pain she was inflicting on Kyoshi. It is relevant, she said. Air nomads aren't outlaws. This is like finding out you had a second head hidden under your robes the whole, the whole while. Maybe, satis maybe satisfying Rangi's curiosity would get her out of horse stance early. My mother was born a nun in the Eastern Air Temple, Kyoshi said. I didn't know how much, I didn't know much about her early life. Hold on. Yeah, uh, I don't know much about her early life other than she became a master at a young age and was highly regarded. Talking provided a useful distraction from the acid eating her mu from the acid eating her muscles. Then, on a journey through the Earth Kingdom, she met my father in a small town somewhere. He, he was the Dao Fei, an earthbender and a small time thief. Oh, I can already see where this is going, Rangi said. Yes, he dragged her into a scheme and she fell in love with him, both and the life of an outlaw. She must have been born into the wrong existence as an air nomad, because she tattooed over her arrows with serpents and dove into the underworld with her whole being, seeking out more adventure. Oh, wait. Hold on. Yeah, seeking out some more... Yeah, let me say that again. She must have been born into the wrong existence as an airmail mat because she tattooed over her arrows with serpents and dove into the underworld with her whole being, seeking out more adventure. Rangi shook her head, still not able to get over an airbender going rogue. That's just so bizarre. You heard the others talk about her. She, came, she became a relatively big figure among Dao Fei, more so than my father. 
but her airbender didn't suffer from a spiritual taint, or so her journal says, letting herself be absorbed by worldly concerns and greedy ones at that caused her power to dwindle, so she compensated with a set of fans. With a set of fans, Rangi said, snapping her fingers at, the mis at a mystery solved. For the life of me, I couldn't figure out why you had fans as an earthbender. I didn't ask because I thought it might have been a touchy subject. It might have been a touchy subject. It is. The searing pain of her, in her legs had been replaced by a duller, more manageable agony. Why do you think I never told Helsing? Oh, by the way, I'm the product of one of the worst disgr disgraces to your culture in recent memory. By the time I was old enough to consider bringing it up, there was no point. I had my job. I'd met you. Five minutes, Rangi said. Not bad. Kiyoshi pushed the hurt to the back of her mind. I think I can keep going. Rangi took a lap around her, checking her posture at all angles. It's galling. A master airbender abandoning her, abandoning her spirituality for a low life. No offense. None taken. It doesn't sit well with me either. Reiki poked, uh, Reiki poked her in the small of the back. Promise you'll never throw your life away over a boy, she said. Her voice quoted thickly with disdain. Kiyoshi laughed. I won't. Besides, who could possibly be worth the full weight of what she was saying? slammed down on her mid-sentence like a, he a heavy gate. I won't... I won't over a boy. <laughs> yeah, the full weight of what she was saying slammed down on her mid-sentence like a heavy gate. <coughs> My throat just got, like, super dry. Yeah, the full weight of what she was saying slammed down on her mid-sentence like a heavy gate. Her insides, her insides bo boiled with disgust at her own weakness. She had let herself laugh. She had spoken Kelsing's name out loud without cursing Jian Zeus in the same breath. And worst of all, she had forgotten you. It didn't matter how long the lapse was. To release her grip on him, even for a second, was unforgivable. Yeah, to release her grip on him for even a second was unforgivable. Rengi knew it too. Her face crumpled and she turned away. Uh, <clears throat> Kyoshi remembered what Lao Gu had said about her spirit making so too much noise. Rengi, seeing Rengi still stilled with grief in the front of her, drove the lesson home. The two of them held storms inside. Kyoshi had to be stronger in body and mind. Moments of happiness were like useful proofing, liquid testing, liquid testing the cracks in the jar. The less they occurred, the greater chance she was on the right track for vengeance. She was still in a low stance. She remembered the in, the ineffectual fire. 
She was still in a low stance. She'd remembered the ineffectual fire fist she'd thrown in Gianti's face. Perhaps if she'd embraced her firebending ability earlier, she could have ended him right there and then. Let me try producing flame, Kyushi said. Rangi looked up and frowned. Look, Rangi looked up and frowned. Kyushi's rededication to her cause felt hot and bitter inside her, like steam in a plugged tea kettle. She was sure that if she let it out, she could firebend. Fire fists, she said. I think I can do them with real flame now. I feel like it'll work. No, Rangi said. No? Kiyoshi was taken aback by her certainty. Firebending felt so real, so close. What do you mean, no? I mean, no. You're as tense as a rolled up armadillo lion right now. You're going to produce the wrong kind of flame and develop bad habits. Watch. Watch. Ricky stepped to the side. Without warning, she dropped into her stance and punched the air, snapping her sleeves with the force of her motion. Snapping her sleeves with the force of her motion. Kyushi couldn't see her Kyushi could see her knuckles smolder with the tips of an incense stick. You need to work on relaxation and mental coordination first, Rangi said. Fire lessons and firebending are all about for suppressing flame and keeping it controlled. For a beginner, making visible fire means failure. Here she scoffed, scoffed to her. Not producing flame had been the cause of her problems from the start. Let me try, then let me try what you did. She planted her feet in the mimicry of Rangi and chambered her fists. Kiyoshi, don't. She imagined Jianzi's face, inhaled and struck. Her one experience at flame spinning had jiggled something loose, and made it easy for her to breathe, to spiral outward. Hold on. Her one experience at flame spitting had jiggled something loose, made it easy for her to, made it easy for her to breathe, to spiral outward from her lungs and combust. Too easy. Energy raced down her arm and crashed into her fingers. It caused her nerves to light up with signals, as if she gripped a red hot coal straight from the from straight from the stove. Instead of the crisp glow that Rangi produced, the heat that came out of Kyushi's fist was erratic, toggling. The popping of water added to hot oil. Top. The popping of water added to hot oil. It went on for far long and caused far too much pain. Kyushi fell on her back and tried to get herself pointed away from any time. But yeah, Kyushi fell on her back and tried to get herself pointed away from any target. She managed to aim her hand at the sky in time. A tiny contorted spout of black smoke belched upward from her fingers. Kyushi sat up. Rangi watched the pathetic yarn ball of vapor climb into the air. Then she gave Kyushi a stare that was a hard... Uh... Then she gave Kyushi a stare that was hard enough to flatten iron. They were saved from a difficult conversation. They were saved from a difficult. They were saved. Yeah, they were saved from a difficult conversation by Lep. He crested the hill next to him. He crested the hill next to them and traced the path of smoke with his finger. What kind of broke down firebending was that? He said with a snicker. He directed the question at Rangi, not having seen the source. Rangi crossed her arms. I had a momentary collapse of discipline, she said, still glaring at Kiyoshi. It won't happen again. Not if I ever want to firebend properly. 
Mike shrugged. Lighten up. I was just asking. If the two of you are done collapsing, breakfast is ready. Breakfast was some manner of, ro of rodent, hunted, gutted, skinned, and burnt, to the point of unrecognizability. Kyoshi and Rangi ate with big, angry bites as they sat with the Delphi around the rebuilt fire, each trying to show the other how upset they were through aggressive gnawing. Lek forgot his portion as he, as he watched them, amazed. I didn't think any army princess and a servant girl from a fancy mansion would take to the elephant rat. Angry eating. Very angry eating. Yeah. Lek forgot his portion as he watched them, amazed. I didn't think an army princess and a servant girl from a fancy mansion would take to elephant rat. Survival training at the academy, Rangi said, breaking the bone with her fingers to get at the marrow. We learned to accept whatever food we could find in the wild. I used to eat garbage, Kyoshi said. That drew stares from the group. I thought Jessa and Harky left you in a farming village, Karima said. I, I know. <laughs> Goddamn Kyoshi. <laughs> Kyoshi's so, dude, same. I love her. Yeah. That drew stare, that drew stares from the group. I thought Jessa and Hark left you in, the far in a farming village, Karima said. That doesn't mean the farmer shared food with me. Kyoshi worked her tongue around the stringy fiber of meat caught in between her teeth. They might not have known I was a child of outlaws, but I was still an outcast there. He treated me like I was unclean, and then I had to do things like this to survive. So, you know, self-fulfilling prophecy. Reasons like that are why I can't st stand law-abiding, salt-of-the-earth folk, Wong said. It's the holier-than-thou attitude, the hypocrisy. He wiped his hands on a leaf. If anything, they deserve to be knocked out and robbed on a regular basis. Yeah. If anything, they deserve to be knocked out, knocked out and robbed on a regular basis. He, knew, he noticed Kyoshi staring at him. What? He said. I practice what I, I practice what I preach. You must have hated their guts, Karima said. The villagers? Not really. Kyoshi found she meant it. Not as much as the people who left me with them. Lek threw the remnants of his meal into the fire and walked off fuming silently. He disappeared behind the other he disappeared behind the other side of Peng Peng, the only member of the party who seemed to make him happy. Alright, what's his problem? Kyoshi snapped. Every time I seek a fact or an opinion about my parents, he has a fit. That's because he idolized them, Karima said. We picked him up in a town outside the Misty Palms Oasis. He just lost his brother. He just lost his brother, his last remaining family. Hark and Jessa took him in for a few days, and he proved useful on a job, so they taught him more and more of the trade until he grew into a stricter follower of that law code than the rest of us. He worshipped the ground they walked on. Perhaps Karima had meant to soothe the beast inside Kyoshi, but instead she'd smeared its nose with fresh blood. Oh, I'm sorry, Kyoshi said, a lifetime's worth of unused irony pouring, pouring forth. 
I'll remember to be nicer to the boy my mother and father decided to decided to raise instead of me. Crema made a gesture with her thumbs to indicate how little she cared about the issue. What about you? She said to Rangi. What's a sparky young noble like you doing with an earth peasant? The mere reminder of her duty caused Rangi to sit up straighter. I'm honor bound to follow and protect Kyoshi. Nope. Karima said, forgetting she'd asked. Gonna cut you off right there. The last time I listened to an air the last time I listened to a firebender talk about honor, my ears nearly rotted off my skull. Had to kick him had to kick him out of my bed with both feet. She and Wong got up. The older the two older Delphi didn't feel the need to reciprocate their life stories. Oh no! <laughs> yeah. Man. Firebenders and their honor. <sighs> yeah. Uh, she and Wong got up. The two older fire the two older Delphi didn't feel the need to reciprocate their life stories. Wong pointed two fingers at the campfire and sunk it a few feet into the ground before covering it up. His size belied the dis his his size belied the dexterity of his earth bending. In fact, she had confirmed last night that every member of her parents' gangs had finesse to spare. The exact quality she was lacking. We need to talk, Kyu, she said, getting up as well. Last night we were interrupted before I agreed to do anything. Oh, come on, really? Karima said. After what we've been through, you want to take your bison and ditch us in the middle of nowhere. We shared a meal, Wong said, looking genuinely hurt. We beat up lawmen together. My demands haven't changed, Q, she said. I want bending training, and the only benders around you are lot. You'll teach me, personally. What are you lumping me in for, Earth Girl? Karima said. You want to learn water bending forms to relax and improve your circulation? Kyoshi had prepared for an answer overnight for this purpose. Wisdom can be gleaned from every nation, she said, using a quote of Kalsang's. If learning about the other elements can make you stronger, then I'll do it. That desperate for revenge, huh? Krama said. Who is this powerful man who's wronged you? You never told us his name. That's because you don't need to know it. Kyoshi didn't want to talk about Jianzu. He was too renowned throughout the Earth Kingdom. The same way, the same went for her identity as the Avatar. Information about their link could spread, giving him a trail to hunt her down before she was ready to fight him. Every edge could, every edge could count. Yeah, every edge could count in this battle. Kyoshi recalled the way her parents' gang had flown over the rooftops left. Yeah, Kyoshi recalled the way her parents' gang had flown over the rooftops last night, un unimpeded. They'd, practi they'd practically reached the same heights Jiantu had with his stone bridges. I want to learn how to run across the sky, she said like you did in town. Dust... Dust stepping? Dust stepping? Uh, let me say it again. Because the two words sound like I'm saying it weird. 
I feel like I'm saying it weird. I want to learn how to run across the sky, she said, like you did in town. Dust stepping? Wong said. His unusually impass impassive face took on an edge of seriousness. It's our group's signature technique, Karima said. Though for me, it's mist stepping. And it's not something you get for free. The atmosphere changed. Previously, the Dalfe had treated Chiyoshi's demands as amusing, the barking of a puppy trying to look fierce. This was the first time they'd gotten truly cautious and guarded, as if they might be swindled in the trade. Reiki noticed their reservations. You're acting pretty serious about a technique I cribbed after seeing it once, she said. Karima fixed her with a stare. Other groups probably would have killed you for that. Other groups would have other groups probably would have killed you for that, she said without a hint of jest. You, you don't last long in our world by letting everyone see your advantages. Secrets are how we survive. She turned back to Kyoshi. We teach you. That means you're in, for real, and for life. You'd have to swear our oaths and follow our codes. In the eyes of those who abide the law, you'd be a Dafe. I'd be like Tagaka, Kyushi thought. I'd be like my parents. She still she stilled the revulsion inside her and nodded. I understand. Kyushi, think about what you're doing, Rangi yelled. Top knots right, for once, Wong said. You don't take these vows lightly. It means accepting us as your brothers and sisters. He raised his, he raised his brows, showing the whites of his eyes. Since we've met, since we've met, you've been looking down your nose at us. Can you honor, can your honor take that hit? Associating with such unclean folk? The big man was more incisive yeah, the big man was more incisive than to look. Kyoshi knew what it was like being on the receiving end of disdain. Her answer was yes. As far as she was concerned, her personal honor and reputation had no had no value. Trading them for more power trading them for more power was an easy choice. She would do it. For Kelsang and Yun. She could practically feel Rangi's disappointment vibrating through the ground. What are these oaths? Kyoshi asked. According to Karima, the swearing-in ceremony was supposed to take place in a grand hall, with the initiate, with the initiate standing other, with the initiate standing under an arc of swords and spears. They had to improvise. Kyoshi took a spot by the river bank while Wong stood behind her and held a pocket knife over her head. <laughs> Karima had Kyoshi make some odd salute. Kyoshi had. Not Kyoshi. Karima had. Yeah, Karima had Kyoshi make the same odd salute the game had used the night before. The night before in the tea, in the tea house, the flattened the flattened left hand represented the the square folk, the law-abiding community, while the right fist hammering it down meant represented followers of the outlaw code. Just in case Kyoshi forgot, she was joining the forces of darkness. <coughs> <coughs> <clears throat> Sorry. Yeah. Ray
Frankie stalked some ways off to the side, making sure to stay within her field of vision so everyone could see how angry and disapproving she was the whole time. Karima ignored her while conducting the ceremony. According to the waterbender, there were normally 54 oaths that had to be taken, reciting from memory by the new member of the gang. She decided to let Kyoshi off easy with just the most important three. Oh, spirits! Karima exclaimed. A lost one comes to us seeking the embrace of family. How will we know her heart is true? How will we know that she follows the code? I shall swear these oaths, Kyushi said in response. I swear to defend my brothers and sisters and obey the commands of my elders. Their kin will be my kin, their blood my blood. Should I fail to uphold this vow, I may be hacked to death by many knives. The words were easy to say. They caused no tugs of conflict on her spirit. Yoon and Kelsang had been her Yoon and Kelsang had been her love her lifeblood. She should have she should have defended them with every scrap of her being. They might have lived had she embraced her power more, more fully. Next, Kyo she said. I swear to follow no ruler and be and be beholden to no law. Should I become the lackey of any crown or a country, uh, may I be ripped apart by thunderbolts. As a, good as a good citizen of the Earth Kingdom, this lion made her more nervous. Yoon had, had always said the Avatar... <laughs> Yoon had always said the Avatar had to act independently independently of the Four Nations, but, this, but to disregard the law and order completely felt like an extreme for the, sec for the sake of extremes. Did her parents walk down the street trying to flaunt every s statute and custom they could think of? Stop drifting, Kramer hissed. Kyoshi coughed and straightened up. Last, I swear never to make an honest living from those who abide, who abide the law. I will take no legitimate wave in work. I, not wave. I will take no legitimate wage in work for no legitimate man. Should I ever s accept coin for my labors, may I be sliced to bits by a variety of knives. She didn't see the difference between the first and the third punishments. And the last oath was perhaps one of the more inimical. I'm gonna look that up. Inimical. Okay, hold on just one second. I will be right back.
I am back in the room. Okay. Alrighty. Back to where I was. There we go. Alright. She didn't see the difference between the first and the third punishments. And the last oath was perhaps one of the more inimical of the being. Back in Yokia, the a study job had been the only barrier between her and death. I'm not that person anymore, Kiyoshi reminded herself. <clears throat> That girl is gone and will never come back. <coughs> with her third vow, with her third vow, she was done. I see no stranger before me but a sister, uh, Karima said. The spirits have borne witness. Let our family prosper in the days to come. She saluted Kiyoshi and stepped back. The heavy, a heavy weight slammed down on Kiyoshi's collarbones, and she momentarily panicked, fearing an attack from behind. The sensation was too similar to the rock that Jiangdu had locked around her wit, around her wit, her wrists. But it was just Wang giving her a congratulatory pat on the shoulders. Welcome to the other side. Welcome to the other side, he said, unsmiling. He brushed past her like he'd finished re rearranging furniture and joined Karima in trudging back to the campsite. Kiyoshi blinked. That's it? What happens now? What happens now is we leave this place on your, bri on your bison, Karima said, without looking back at her. As soon as we can. We start blasting. So anyway, start blasting. <laughs> oh yeah. They left her alone with Frankie. Instead of scolding Kyoshi, the firebender sing simply gave her a shrug that said, "You get what you pay for." Karima and Wang were already cleaning up the remnants of camp once they caught up. The big man took special care to cover their footprints, sweeping dust over the signs of their presence with little privets of with little privets of earth bending. The deal was for lessons, Kyoshi said. And you'll get them once we pick up a score, Karima said. She th she checked the level of water her she checked the level of her water of her water pouch and made a face. Even little baby vengeance seekers need food and money to survive. In case you haven't noticed, we're out of both. I'm not eating elephant wrap for two days in a row. Kiyoshi pulled her lips over her teeth in frustration. They touted the ser they touted the seriousness of the oath so much that she thought they'd start treating her like an equal after she took them. Instead, they were treating her like lead. She had to establish a better position in the hierarchy, or else this would go on forever. As Wong reached down to pick up the blanket, she stepped on it, pinning it to the ground. He stood up and gave her a stare that, could, that had probably heralded countless brawls in the past. Yeah, he stood up and gave her a stare that had probably heralded countless brawls in the past. Kiyoshi crossed her arms and met his gaze. He wasn't more dangerous than Tagako or Jianzu. After trying to deal after trying to deal death through the power of his mind alone, Wong broke the silence. 
keep being a brat and I'll never teach you how to use your fans, he said. Kiyoshi was going to retort out of instinct, but the implication made her pause and step back. She pulled out one of her fans. You know how to use these? They've been a puzzle so far. Reiki had taken a look at the weapons earlier, tested their balance, and concluded she couldn't teach Kyoshi much about them, other than using them as short, heavy clubs in their folding state. They're not part of the Fire Academy curriculum, she said with a shrug. Maybe you can stake them into places you can't take a sword. Wong plucked the fan out of Kyoshi's hand and snapped it open. He tossed it into the air and spun it perfectly. I don't know. Hit him with it. <laughs> yeah. It's Rangi. Not Rangi. Yeah. Like, I hope I keep, I'm saying her name right, which I think I am, but I might not, but I think I am. Yes. Yeah, I am. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Wong plucked the fan out of Kyoshi's hand and snapped it open. He tossed it into the air and spun it perfectly around its pivoting pin. The leaf tracing circle, the leaf tracing circles as, as it flew. He twirled around himself and caught the fan behind his back before lifting it coquettishly to his face. The peony shed it, sheds its beautiful. The peony sheds its beauty before the moon. He sang in a deep, beautiful, vibrant voice, using the surface of the fan to reflect and amplify the sound. Shamed by the light of the spirit so pure, I leap to catch its petals and mourn what I have left unsaid. He thrust the fan all around him in a series of flitting gestures, the leaf opening and closing rapidly like, a be like the beating of insect wings. It was an expert it was an expertly performed dance, but Kyoshi knew it could have also been a secret a sequence of attacks, defensive weaving, evasion, and retaliation against multiple opponents. With a flourish, Wong ended the performance in a traditional heroic pose, a deep stance with his arms spread wide, his head intentionally wobbling side to side with the leftover energy from his motions. It was a showcase of classic poetry, older than old school. Auntie Moy would have fainted with delight. Kyoshi applauded, the only appropriate response to a display of skill that great. Where did that come from? She asked. Hark, we have a lineage through your father's side that traces back to one of the royal theater groups in Bossing Say. Krima said, and we stay sharp enough at performing to have a plausible cover in the city to visit. We're the Flying Opera Company, after all. She raised the leg behind her, over her head, and kept it going until she completed a forward-facing, no-handed cartwheel, a move that elite dancers saved for the climax of their performances. Krima looked like she could have done her market shopping traveling that way. Toyoshi was astonished. That would, that would explain how they were so light on their feet. Royal theater performers were known to be some of the most physically capable people in the Earth Kingdom, able to mimic dozens of martial styles on stage and act out dangerous stunts without getting hurt. It made her feel better about the agreement they'd struck. She could get some extra value out of the bargain. Wong folded the fan and handed it back to her. I'll teach you to use this. 
she said, for a fifth of your shares on any future jobs we do. Deal, she, she said quickly. She didn't know what shares were, but she would have paid nearly any price to better understand her weapons. Rangi and Karima both smacked their hands against their foreheads, but for different reasons. You could have gotten at least half, Karima said to Wong. Luck popped his head around the side of Peng Peng. Do you want to get going, or do you want to sit here rubbing each other's backs all day? He said. Hey, Lek, guess who the newest member of the gang is? Karima said. Official and everything. Lek's eyebrows squeezed together in frustration. You cannot be serious. He waved his arm at Kyushi, like, like she was a fake vase they brought they brought home. She doesn't care about the code. She's she's a biter chap. She's squarer than the whole in she's squarer than the whole in an Earth Kingdom coin. And she has a bison. Here she snapped. So unless you like walking, I suggest you deal with me being part of your stupid outlaw family. If Karima or Wong took offense to her regression and attitude toward Dao Fei, they didn't show it. I am never calling Ken. Lex back. He went back to making final adjustments on Peng Peng's rings. He'd saddled the giant bison by himself. Too impre impressive, an, impre an impressive time too. Hold on. I need to get something. Yeah, I am never calling you Ken. Uh, Lex back. He went back to making final adjustments on Peng Peng's rings. He'd, he'd saddled the bi giant bison by himself. And in an impressive time, too. Neither Kyushi nor Reiji could find any fault with the work he'd done as they mounted Peng Peng. Lex took offense said their exclamation. I know what I'm doing. He said, I probably have more practice than you two. If we're being perfectly honest, our whole reputation was built on Jess's bison, Karima said. We might talk a good game, but Long Yan did all the work. Smuggling's a cinch when you can just fly over checkpoints. She and Wong finished loading and climbed onto Peng Peng's back. Reiki marked her territory in the driver's seat, daring Lek to challenge her for it. He compensated for his downgrade in a peck in the pecking order by pulling a crude map out of his pocket. Real leaders navigated and scheduled. We're going to a meeting post in the mountains outside the We're going to a meeting post in the mountains outside Ba Sing Se, he said, denting the paper with his finger. We'll get the latest news from other groups and find an easy and find a few easy jobs to get our feet back into the water. Rangi lifted off. The late morning sun had yet to turn oppressive, and with the prep work having been done by extra hands, Peng Peng's unhurried climb into the cool air almost felt relaxing. How did the two of you get a bison? Lux's sudden question was tinged with suspicion and jealousy. Neither of you were raised air nomad, he said, and this girl would never let you fly her unless she, she'd already known you for a long time. Did you steal her from an airbender friend? In her head, Kiyoshi silently thanked Lex for a moment. In her head, Kiyoshi silently thanked Lex thanked Lek 
for reminding her of her duty. This is what she needed to say. This is where she needed to stay. Down in the muck, hidden, painted in hatred for herself and her enemy, not flying in the wind with Kelsey. Yes, Kyo, she said. I did. Frankie gave her a worried look, not understanding why she lied. Luck shook his head in disgust. Separating a monk from their bison, he said. That's cold. Though I should have expected such low behavior from someone who doesn't respect their mother and father. Kyoshi said nothing and stared into the distance, where the horizon broke into jagged formations against the, against the sky. The empty feeling was good. The... It, it absolved her of choice, allowed her to think for herself as merely a vessel. Allowed her to think of herself as merely a vessel, an agent of balance. But her tranquility was broken when she noticed something was missing. Yeah, she. But her tranquility was broken when she noticed something missing. Wait, she said, turning around in the saddle. In the saddle. Where's Lagu? And that is the end of that chapter. And then I think this might be the last chapter I do. This the next chapter after that? No, it's a pretty long chapter. Oh, wow. It is a very long chapter. Oh, my God. Jesus, that is a long chapter. Yes, this is the last chapter I'm going to do. Because Jesus, the next... The next chapter after that is like 30 pages, and I'm just like, I'm not going to read that. <laughs> okay. So now the next, the, the next day, uh, chapter. The next chapter is um, called Obligations. Obligations. I always had a feeling I would be undone by a fancy party. Jansu muttered. He and Heyran were in the main library, surrounded by the map collection. The best and comically worst representation of the known world were posted by on the walls behind panes of flawless crystal. Ragged, heavily used pages. <clears throat> Hold on, sorry. Ugh. Sorry, I just gotta adjust myself again. Ugh. Actually, hold on, just one second. surrounded by the map collection. The best and comically worst representations of the known world were posted on the walls behind panes of flawless crystal. Ragged, heavily used pages from nautical chart books from nautical chart books hung next to cloth maps stained next to cloth maps stained the color of smoked tea. Jiangsu liked this room. It portrayed the, adva the advancement of human understanding. Heron had insisted. Heron had insisted they meet twice a day since the incident, regardless of whether there had been there had been any updates. This afternoon, there had been an update. She finished reading the invitation. The invita The invitation. Yeah, she finished reading the invita The invit Oh my god. The invitation. Yeah, she finished reading the invitation stamped with insignia of the flying boar and tossed it on the, de on the desk. 
the Beifong family wishes to hold a celebration for the Avatar, commemorating his victory over the pirates of the Eastern Sea in front of the gathered sages of the Earth Kingdom. Xianzu, this is a bigger disaster than that victory. I thought Lu Beifong agreed to be hands off when it came to the Avatar. Tough. Oh yeah. Man, the Beifongs were very prominent back then. Yeah, it goes to show how prominent they were. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. Jianzu, this is a bigger disaster than that victory. I thought Lu Beifong agreed to be hands off when it came to the Avatar. He did. It's Hui who's behind this. Jianzu rolled the letter opener between his fingers, longing for a sharper implement and something to stick it in. He had been at this game for the past year or so, whispering in Lu's ears that training the Avatar shouldn't be left to a man of such humble origins. He put the blunt metal knife down. Hui may have a point. Look how Karuk turned out. We were kids back then, and so was Karuk. Hey, Ran said. It wasn't our responsibility to raise him. Hui still represents... No. Hui still presents it as a strike against us, Jianzu said. Did Sha respond about the Shershas? No, and even if he did, there wouldn't be enough time before this party. One thing Heiren shared with Jianzu was a disdain for frivolities. Frivolities. She cracked her knuckles. We could say the Avatar is sick. We could say the Avatar is sick. We could, but then I would look like a bad guardian who can't keep the most important child in the, wor in the world healthy. Hui Wu send doctors, herbalists, and spiritual healers, all insisting they see the Avatar in person for treatment. Every time we turn his agents away, it'll, sh it'll sow more suspicion against amongst the other sages. No. The truth will get out, Jianzu said, leaning back in his chair. It's simply a matter of how long we can delay it. Heyran's military mind was already adapting. Then we, can, then we need to consolidate our allies. Find out which sages will stick by you after this debacle comes to light. It's going to end up with your, fa with your faction against his. And right now, we don't have to count on... And right now, we don't have a count of those numbers. Jiangsu smiled uh, as a possibility dangled in his head, waiting to be tugged. He could always count on his friend to seed him with ideas. These forced meetings have paid off. We need to do something like that, he said. He drummed the tips of his fingers together. What's your wardrobe look what's your wardrobe uh, what's your wardrobe looking like these days? Karen gave him a stare that said he should be glad she didn't have a letter opener in his hands in her hands. I just wanted to make sure you have a nice gown ready, he said innocently. We have a fancy party to attend. Without Ping Ping, they'd made without Ping Ping, they bet they'd made the trip to Galway the old fashioned way. Slowly, in a big caravan, with lots of gifts in tow. By the time they arrived uh, at the estate at the estate, Giantu had come up with a new policy he would enact. 
Airbenders, the most elite in the in the kingdom, needed to flatten out every single inch of the roads. No cost would be too great if it meant never having to suffer another skull bouncing, teeth clattering journey journey over bumpy paths. He stepped out of his moving prison cell and squinted into the shining glory of Beifang Manor. If there was anything he'd learned when he was he was building his own estate at Yokia at Yokia. It was that rich people's houses were all essentially the same. Walls to keep the townsfolk out, a garden as big as possible to display humanity before nature. Just <laughs> a garden as big as possible to, to display humility before nature. A residential quarter that where a residential quarter where that humility was tossed on its ear, preferably with as much gold and silver and lay as possible. Chamber Chamberlain Huey greeted them at the head of the column. Hold on. Chamberlain Huey greeted them at the head of a column of footmen. The short, stocky bureaucrat shielded himself from the sun with a parasol. Master Jianzu, he said, raising the shade to reveal a grizzled, brick-like face. It always surprised Jianzu how the man looked as if he spent his days breaking rocks with a pickaxe, when the heaviest object he lifted was his master's ivory seal. How was your journey? Unnecessary and grating, like you. Most pleasant, Chamberlain Huey. Most pleasant indeed. It always, it's always the utmost delight to serve our magnificent nation up close. Yikes. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, but he was, that was his inner monologue. Of course he wouldn't say that. But yeah, fucking the spite. The spite he has. Most pleasant, Chamberlain Huey. Most pleasant indeed. It's always the most, it, it's always the most delight to survey our magnificent nation up close. The next carriage and the train pulled up. Ostrich horses stamping their feet until the weight behind them came to a halt. Huey opened the door himself, probably so that he could be the first to take the hand of the occupant. Headmistress, he said, providing Hayward an unnecessary help out. You look radiant. I'd swear you've stepped out of the pages of, of Yuan Zen's finest love poetry. Yeah. You look radiant. I swear you've stepped out of the pages of Wan Zen's finest love poetry. He angled his parasol as if the sun would be deadly on her skin. It wasn't like heat and light from the sky were the source of her incredible powers. No. Hayran barely disguised her shudder at Hui being her first sight out of the carriage. Former headmistress, she corrected. Ah, but educators deserve the utmost respect for life, Hui said, his words and smile coated in oil. Or so I've always believed. Jianzu felt terrible for his friend in this situation, in these situations. Being a rich, beautiful, well-connected widow drew a certain breed of suitor out of the woodwork. Men like Hui could interpret the most hostile snubs 
as part of an ongoing courtship game. Yeah. Men like Hui could interpret the most hostile snubs as a part of an ongoing courtship dance, refusing to consider the possibility that Hang Ren wanted nothing to do with them. And when will Master Kelsing be joining us? Hui said, his fingers lingering on Hei Ran's, and until she yanked them away. Uh, yeah, Hui said, his fingers lingering on Hei Ran's until she yanked them away. I, no I noticed Avatar Yoon is not with you. I assume they'll be arriving, arriving together shortly. I assume they'll be arri arriving together shortly? The Chamberlain's eyes darted around their faces, checking the corners of their lips, the dilation of their irises in for involuntary twitches. Jiansu knew that Hui played a game of details, induction. He turned slightly... He turned slight hints into broad generalizations that he poured into the ears of Liu Beifang and the other sages. Right now, the Avatar... Right now, the Avatar choosing to travel with Kaelsang was obviously the sign of a slight crack, a burgeoning rift between Yun and Jianzu, wasn't it? Jianzu went back to how he threatened the true Avatar on the day everything had gone to pieces. The net, the net cast by his power and influence over the Earth King, over the Earth Kingdom was real, but it required constant, exhausting effort to maintain. The challengers he'd stamped out since Karuk's death were too many to count, and now here was the latest generation of Parasite, catching him and his most vulnerable. Yeah, they are together, yes. Jiantu said. He noticed the way Hei Ran flinched beside him. Hui saw it too. With a smile, the Chamberlain led them to the receiving hall. The interior of the Beifang estate suffered from the rare sickness of wealth-induced monotony. monotony. I'm saying that right, right? Not me. Yes. Um, the interior of the Beifang estate suffered from the rare sickness of wealth induced monotony. It was covered from floor to ceiling and the same queasy brownish green paint that had one ha, that had that had at one point been the most expensive shade in the Earth Kingdom. It was meant to show off just how rich the family was, but these days the main effect it had was making Giante feel like he was that uh, it meant to show off just how rich the family was. But these days, the main effect it had was making Jiantu feel like he was being slowly digested in the acidic maw of a scavenger. At the gullet of the columned hall was a double skidded dais di where, over many generations, the leader of the Beifang clan and their spouse had held court. These days, only one side of it remained occupied Liu Beifang, Jiantu's old, old master. Sat on the, sat on the oversized throne, his dust, his dust-colored robes making a tent around his wizened head at the peak. He may have looked like a mummy held together by silk, silk threads and spite, but his mind was aggressive as ever. Head mistress, wonderful to see you as always. He squawked. Acknowledging Heira as fast as he could before turning to Jiantu. What's this about? What's this about a loan for the Southern Water Tribe? Yeah. 
this place about a loan for the water for the Southern Water Tribe? He didn't ask about the Avatar. Nothing like a business transaction to get the old lizard crow tunneled in. Jiantu had almost forgotten about the request he'd made to Pei Fong after the battle with the pirates. Work hadn't stopped simply because the Avatar's identity 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 had been had been in doubt. He bowed deeply before answering. Sifu, Sifu, I made that request because the encounter with Tugaka brought up an issue of balance between the four nations. He said, the, water, the Southern Water Tribe could use assistance in developing a legitimate navy. Tugaka's presence was stifling any movement in that direction. With far more ranging deep water ships, they could prosper from trade and protect themselves from their neighbors much like their northern cousins. The loan could be for the loan would be for the construction of such vessels. We are their neighbors, Master Jianzu, Hui said, materializing by Wu's by Lu's side. Why would we want to give them any position why would we want to give them any position of strength relative to the Earth Kingdom? Why, they might try to claim the contested Kuji Islands with such a fleet. Kuji. Yeah. Why, they might try to re they might try to claim the contested Kuji Islands with such a fleet. A familiar rage. Familiar rage ray raised the hairs on the back of Jianzu's neck. Hui had no real stake in this matter, not even personal greed. There was no reason for him to want the Southern Water Tribe to remain poor and undeveloped and vulnerable. It was simply opposition for opposition's sake. Somewhere down the line, Hui, Hui had decided to take yeah, somewhere along the line. Yeah. yeah, somewhere down the line, Huey had decided to take to make his name by using Jianzu as a ladder. And a straw man. Hold on, sorry. I wasn't paying attention and I'm not getting the fun. I'm not getting it in my head. Uh, it was simply opposition for opposition's sake. Somewhere down the line, Hui had decided to make his name, to make his name by using Jianzu as a ladder and a straw man, and whatever other analogy applied. It was easy for Hui to gain political power and fame by tearing down Jianzu's work, then doing his own. No matter how logical and beneficial Jianzu's actions were, Hui would, Hui would undercut them. He pushed to end treaties that had taken years to develop, pushing, brushing them off as unnecessary when in truth he didn't understand how they worked and didn't care. He stoked petty, he stoked petty rivalries he didn't have to, toying with peace that Jianzu had earned. Had Hui been around during the height of the Yellow Neck atrocities, he would have insisted on treating that madman Zhu Ping, Zhu Ping An like, an, like a folk hero. It was times like these when Jianzi found himself sorely missing the influence of Lu's wife, Lady Wu Mei. She had been an intelligent and vivacious woman, beloved across the, the kingdom and a source of wisdom to Lu's ear. After her death, the old man had become more obstinate and Hui's bold destructiveness had accelerated. I've spoken to the southern chieftain, chieftains and they're excited about the prospect, Jianzu said. They proposed a compact of mutual defense. It's a good idea, Master Beifong, Heiran said, adding an outsider's perspective. Right now, 
the group most capable of pro projecting force over the eastern sea is ironically the Fire Navy. I'm sure the Earth Kingdom and Southern Water Tribe would prefer to command their own waters. Blue didn't look convinced. Jiansu didn't want this opportunity to slip away. If it's about the Fuji Islands, they're worthless, he said. They serve no strategic purpose other than puffing up, natu puffing up national pride. He realized his mistake as soon as he said it. It wasn't like him to blunder so. Master Jiansu! Hui said with fake horror. Surely there is no matter more... Surely there is no matter more important than the pride and love we have for our country. The Earth King has been vexed over those islands since his coronation. Surely you are not questioning his majesty's judgment. Jiantu would have liked nothing better than to moon both the Earth King and Hui on one of those desolate at 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 atolls and see which idiot ate the other first. Before he could respond, Liu waved his hand. Enough! He heaved himself into a standing position. It was barely noticeable, given his hunch. I side with the Chamberlain. There will be no lone and no Southern Water Tribe Navy unless I hear a convincing argument from the Avatar himself. I notice the boy is late. He can find me in the banquet hall with the other guests when he arrives. Lou shuffled out of the receiving hall. The only noise the rasping oh, the only noise the rasping of slipper Yeah. Lou shuffled out of the receiving hall. The only noise the rasping of a slipper The only noise the rasping hold on. I think there's a typo in here, or lack of a word in here. Because it says, the only noise the rasping slipper, the only noise the rasping of a slipper is against the floor. I think it was supposed to say, the only noise was the rasping. The only noise was the rasping of the slippers against the floor. Huh. That's pretty neat. Because I'm trying to reason, read it as it is. And it doesn't make any sense. Because it says, from, straight from the book, Lou shuffled out of the receiving hall, comma, the only noise the rasping of his slippers against the floor. Yeah, I think there was supposed to be a, I think it was supposed to be the only noise was the rasping of his slippers against the floor. Huh, I think I found like a, a an error in this book. It is fun. Alright, let me say it again. Lou shuffled out of the receiving hall. The only noise was the rasping of the slippers against the floor. Jiantu couldn't believe it. Just like that, the future had changed for the worse. The Southern Water Tribe would remain impoverished and outpaced by the rest of the world, all because Hui wanted to win a debate at a party. The stupid, smug whims of one unworthy man had left fingerprints on history that weren't likely to be erased. The Avatar could have made the difference, Jiangzu reminded himself. The thought stuck through him like a stuck through him like a javelin. Master Jiangzu, I apologize for making a counter argument, Tui said, but as you know, it's my duty to master Bait 
to make sure both sides are considered in any important decision. Both sides was a rhetorical weapon used by hypocrites and the ignorant. As far as Giante was concerned, Hui was no better than a Daofei, wantonly burning fields of grain because he enjoyed watching the smoke rise before the horizon. I would show you what I do to Daofei. Chamberlain, that's quite all right, Giante said. I always appreciate your voice in such matters, he hesitated adding a hitch of uncertainty to his body language, the trembling of a man who was hiding the strain of a great burden. In fact, I need your wisdom more than ever right now. Can you join me and the headmistress to talk in private? The upside, the upside to the sudden confession was watching Hui nearly come collapse in surprise. The man grabbed de the desk in his office for support and knocked over a bottle of ink. The black liquid dri dripped down the Chamberlain's sleeve like blood from a wound. You lost the Avatar? He shrieked. Giante wasn't worried about being overheard. He knew from a glance at the walls that Hui had built his plane. He knew from the glance at the walls that Hui had built his plain, unadorned, personal study for soundproofing. It was a safe room of secrets for a man who trafficked in them. The more dangerous element here was Heiran. Jiantu had told her he was going to tell Hui, because she would have never agreed to it. He was driving her away in this very moment. It's as I explained, he said. Yoon and I had an argument about his bending progress. More than an argument, really. I said things to him I should never have. I should... I never had... Sh I said things to him I never should have said. It got out of hand and he ran away with Helsing's help on a bison. The two of them could have gone anywhere in the world. Hayrat's face was still unru... Hayward's face was still remarkably still, but the slightest temperature increase in the room betrayed her emotions. It added to the effect of Giunti's ploy. Hui was still shocked, but the wheels in his mind were already beginning to turn, his chest heaving for a dramatic effect more than a need for air. I thought the monk was the equivalent to a decorative hermit living on your estate, he said, not a good enough actor to keep out the sneer of disdain. He was a companion of Karuk and my friend, you little toad. He was, or so I thought. I didn't realize he'd been plotting, waiting to seize the right moment. Our relationship had suffered over the years, but I could never have but I could never have expected to this extent. Giantu punched the air, letting his real frustration shine through. It's you and I should have understood better. I don't know if the damage can ever be repaired. It can't be that bad, Hui said, hoping with his entire heart that it was truly that bad. Children are volatile at that age. He, he swore upon his own avatar hood that he would never accept me as his master again. Giantu ran his thumb and forefinger over his, over his eyes. Chamberlain Hui, I am begging you for assistance here. The stability of our nation is paramount. If word gets out that you and his gone has gone rogue, there then there will be chaos. The crack that Hui had been hoping for turned out to be a goal the size of the Great Divide. He hadn't been prepared to strike this much gold. Master Jianzu. <sighs> Master Jianzu, 
There are several promise, prominent Earth Kingdom sages, including our benefactor, waiting for the avatar in the Grand Hall, he said, thrusting his hands at the walls. Jiantu never... Jiantu put on a mask he'd never worn before. Helplessness. He let a silence answer for him. Huey composed himself, wanting to reflect the new state of affairs. He was the man in charge now. He strained his collar and clicked his heels together. Unfortunately for him, he also forgot about the ink on his sleeve, ruining the effect of tidiness. Master Jianzu, there's no need to worry, he said. I'll handle this. In the end, Hui told Liu Beifang and assembled si sages the exact plan that Jianzu had used on his own on uh, Yeah, in the end, Hui told Liu Beifang and the other and the assembled sages the exact line that Jianzu had used on his own on his own household. Yun left Yun felt he'd been neglecting his spiritual studies. After much pleading, Jianzu had given him leave to travel alone with Kelsei on a nomadic journey of self-discovery, avoiding such obvious destinations as the air temples or the northern oasis. Yun had been to those places. He needed to grow along his own path, un untrammeled by expectations. It meant no t it meant no contact from the Avatar for a while. The world would have to get along without one until further notice. Jiantu could have said as much Jiantu could have said as could could have said as much himself, but coming from Hui, the story has so much more effect. But coming from Hui Hui the story was so much more effective. It was an open secret among the party guests that the Chamberlain was waging political war against him. The only thing they could ever rely on were basic incontrovertible The only thing they could, they would ever align on were basic incontrovertible facts, like the, like the avatar going on a vacation. The rest, the rest of the visit was spent on trivi trivialities. Jianzu, hold on, I need to adjust myself. The rest of the yeah, the rest of the visit was spent on trivialities. Jiantu weathered the severe annoyance and biting remarks of Liu Beifang, wondering how many more years he'd have to put up with groveling. He'd have to put up with groveling before his former, before his former Sifu. The old man seemed like he would never kick the bucket while the debtors owed him money and nearly the entire Earth Kingdom banked with the House of the Flying Boar. Heyran stood dull-eyed dull in the corner as men prodded for her thoughts on remarriage, in language they thought was subtle. Yeah, Heyran stood dull-eyed in the corner as men prodded for her thoughts on remarriage, in language they thought was subtle and flattering. Some of them, upon hearing her rebuff, immediately pivoted into into inquiring into inquiring about her daughter. Jiantu never understood how she resisted the temptation to bend scorched holes into the ceiling when her element was always available. They left. They left when the party became too much to bear. Getting into a single carriage for the journey back. Heyran's admirers could have interpreted 
that in a certain way, but the two of them simply needed to talk. I know you're angry with me, Giantu said. He slumped back against his seat. About what? Heyran snapped. The fact that you re the fact that you revealed your biggest setback to your worst enemy? That you're piling lies upon lies for no reason, I can see? That you're pi- yeah, let me say that again. That you're piling lies upon lies for no reason, I can see. Why didn't you tell Hui the excuse you gave to the crowd? Because vulnerability equals truth. The only statement of mine Hui would take at face, va face value was one that left me exposed. Now my story is set with the vast majority of the Earth Kingdom. I only have a single opponent, opponent to worry about. She didn't look very confident at, in his tactic. Firebenders thought it... Yeah, she didn't look very confident in his tactic. Firebenders thought in terms of positive jing, in positive jing, jing, always staying on the offensive, on the offensive. It's getting a little difficult to keep track of the wind spewing out of your mouth at this point. Imagine how hard it is for me. All, warf all warfare is based on deception, he said. Isn't that a Fire Nation quote? Heyran suddenly pulled her hairpin out of her tightly bundled style and hurled it against the wall of the coach. It clattered to the floor, the arms bent. For the first time today, Giantu was truly alarmed for a Fire Nation native to treat her hair, her top knot this way meant she felt she was losing her honor. He waited patiently for her to speak. Jianzu, I pushed that boy to the breaking point. Jianzu, I pushed that boy to the breaking point, she said, her voice hoarse. He might have not he might not have been a firebender, and he might have not been the avatar, but Yun was still my student. I had an obligation to him and I failed. Hearing his name all night must have been eating at her. The absent avatar was still the toast of the party. His conquest of the pirates turning into legend through word of mouth. We can still make this right, Jandu said. We simply need to find Kiyoshi. Everything will be fine after that. If that's the case, and I don't think it is, you set ablaze the time we had left and scatter the ashes. As soon as that party is over, Hui is going to march straight down. Hui is going to, is going to march straight to the other sages and tell them what you told them, what you told him. He might not wait. It'll be the conversation topic over dessert. It'll be longer than that, Chiantu said. He's not going to waste an opportunity of this magnitude by hurrying. In fact, if he plays that information too quickly and, caref and carelessly, it'll bite him in the end. He's a man of self-preservation. Heyran tucked herself. Heyran tucked herself into the corner of the carriage. She bunched her bunched-up gown, turning her into a shapeless mass. I wish I could say that about. I wish I could say the same about you these days. To get the last word in, she aggressively went to sleep. Jiantu noticed that people who were former Jiantu noticed that people who were former military could doze off anywhere, 
any time at the drop of a hat. After an hour of silence, he began to drift in and out of consciousness himself, shaken awake by the occasional bumpy road bump, his thoughts forming loose connections and ideas that he made no attempt to preserve. It wouldn't do it wouldn't do to plot too far out. Sometimes the best option was to sit quietly until the next step arrived and turned, like an airbender should, like an earthbender should. Neutral dream. When they arrived, when they arrived home in Yokoya, there was a very validating delivery. There was a very validating delivery for them waiting. Jianzu didn't bother waking up Heiran and hopped out of the coach invigorated by the sight. In the distance, by the stables, were two extremely large wooden boxes, each the size of a small hut, peppered with little holes. The sides of the crate had danger and give, give wide berth painted on them in a slapdash manner. Surrounding them was a crew of underpaid university students, warily brandishing long fork forked prods. They pointed their weapons inward at the boxes. Theft of the contents was not the primary concern. At the head of the group was a portly older gentleman in fine robes, wearing a helmet made of cork. He gleared he geared for adventure in the habit of academics. Yeah, he was geared for adventure in the habit in the habit of academics, who had no idea how dirty and blood, bloody true adventure could get. Professor Professor Shaw. Jiangsu called out. The man waved back. Behind him, the boxes suddenly started rattling and jumping, scaring the handlers. A long whip-like strand shot shot out shot out of a hole punched to the side and lashed yeah two whip like strands shot out of a hole punched in the side and lashed two of the nearest students across across the face and neck before they could re before they could react they screamed and collapsed to the ground in a heap like rag dolls. Professor Shaw looked at his downed interns and then gave Jianzu a big grin and a thumbs up. That must have, that must have meant the Shershas were in good health after their journey. Excellent. Jianzu needed him. Jianzu needed them in peak condition. The beasts were the beast's impeccable sense of smell would let th would let them track. A target. The beast's impeccable sense of smell would let them track a target across a continent. Oceans, if the rumors were to be believed. He'd sent, he'd sent word out to his subordinates across the kingdom. The, mag the magistrates and prefects he'd spent years buying off, telling them to be on the lookout for two girls who had escaped his estate. But it never hurt to have a backup plan that didn't rely on the shifting loyalty and ballooning greed of men. One way or another, he was going to fulfill his promise to the Avatar. There would be no hiding for Kiyoshi. Not in this world. And that is the end of that chapter. Shit, man, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen? Anyway, thank you. Oh, shit. Thank you so much. The politics are getting tense. Hell yeah. Alright, but thank you, everyone. Goodbye. See you next time.